celebrity chef Peter Rake is filming for another episode of his show while criticizing the other cooks. Peter complains about how awful the other chefs are to his daughter Riley. Then, Riley asks him if he could be her plus one at her mother's wedding. However, Peter states it would crash the wedding since he is not invited. So he instead assures her that next weekend would be entirely theirs because he is busy this weekend. As Riley leaves, he receives a call from Barry, who seems to be Peter's lawyer, stating he will be leaving town for the weekend. Peter then leaves for the weekend to see his distant sister at their family's house. Along the road, Peter stops at a local shop to buy cigarettes and sees a group of ladies having a bachelorette party. When Peter enters the store, he has an awkward conversation with Lonnie, an old schoolmate who now runs the store. Later, he arrives at their house and sees his sister Gwen. The siblings greet each other warmly. As they catch up, Gwen receives an important call and needs to take it. Meanwhile, Peter looks outside the window and sees a black goat, but after he looks away for a second, the goat is gone. After Gwen's call, she informs Peter she is the district attorney, leaving Peter blissful because of her achievement. She then tells him that she must go to pursue a significant case, leaving him alone with her housekeeper, Agnes. Strange things occur to Peter, including the appearance of disturbing artwork on their wall, visions of numerous insects infesting the house, and blood in the toilet. Then, while Peter cleans the utensils full of insects, the telephone rings. Peter picks it up and notices it's Lonnie. Lonnie asks Peter if he's doing okay, and Peter replies he's okay. Suddenly, Lonnie tells him he is proud and happy seeing Peter on television and immediately drops the call. Later that night, a bachelorette party attendee, Kara, pays a visit to ask for supplies. Because the electricity in their cabin has gone out, she needs candles and flashlights, so Peter welcomes her in. She is hesitant to enter but relents when it's chilly outside. He then finds the supplies for her, and she leaves. The next day, Peter goes for a run around their neighborhood. Along the way, he notices their old treehouse, and it appears that something happened as Peter recalls echoes of murmured voices and a girl begging. Then, he runs into Kara outside his old treehouse and tells her about this. He also tells Kara how someone had put a creepy mask on its door since there wasn't a mask there before. Meanwhile, two of Kara's friends, Marie and Elena, come and introduce themselves. Elena recognizes Peter as a chef celebrity, which makes Peter thankful. After chatting for a while, Marie and Elena leave to check on Marie's mother, worried that she may have used all of their pot. Peter then invites them to dinner and asks them to assist him in testing a few dishes for his upcoming cookbook. On behalf of everyone, Kara accepts the offer. Later, he prepares himself for dinner with the help of Agnes also. The girls arrive and introduce Lilith, Marie's mother, and Morgan. They all appreciate and compliment Peter's house except Elena as she asks for the food, so they can go to the table to drink, eat, and have a good time. While at the dinner table, Peter notices a tattoo on their hand and asks what it is, and they explain to him that it's a symbol of their sisterhood. Later, as Peter prepares dessert, he tells Agnes that he's already tipsy, so Agnes offers him soup to drink to make him feel better. As the girls are jamming with the guitar, Agnes offers tea to them while Peter offers a chocolate dessert. However, they all decline since they're still full. Then, because Peter is drunk, he tells the girls to stay as long as they like and lurches to bed. Before he sleeps, he suddenly sees hallucinations of his father's painting, smiling at him. The following day, he wakes up in his bed beside Morgan. He tries to talk to Morgan, but she doesn't respond. Things are undoubtedly weird as Peter sees a cockroach crawling along the bathroom mirror and begins to hear old music and peacock sounds from downstairs. Weirded out about these, Peter goes downstairs to investigate what's happening. Then, he sees a peacock and a gramophone playing in Agnes' room, so he turns off the music. However, as he turns it off, a horrifying figure appears dripping in blood, so he immediately leaves the room. He goes upstairs and calls Morgan, but she's already gone. Suddenly, the doorbell rings, and a weird creature appears in front of his door. The creature goes inside and walks toward Peter. Morgan then starts banging on the door and asking for help, trying to open it, but the door seems to be not opening. Another creature appears and runs across Peter. He slowly begins to collapse, losing control of his limbs and becoming paralyzed. When Peter wakes later, suddenly, he's in his underwear, shackled in his bed, and immobile. Morgan is also lying at his feet, surrounded by candles. She wakes up and seems confused, but this is all an act. Then, the weird creature appears and reveals herself. It's Kara. She is Becca's sister, a girl Peter abused before she took her life because no one believed her or spoke up for her. Peter humiliates Becca in front of Kara, calling her a coward for taking the easy way out by killing herself and claiming they were just kids when it happened. Then, Kara states she was the one who found Becca after she took her life with the knife that Peter was selling. 
However, Peter tells her it is not what she thinks it is. Then, Morgan returns with a crossbow and loads it, pointing at Peter's genitals. The rest of the girls arrive and reveal that they're witches, confusing Peter. So they start to light the candles with their hands, making Peter panic and scream Agnes' name. But she doesn't respond. Peter asks why he can't move, and Kara replies it's a spell for paralysis. They all leave the room to prepare the things to do for Peter. Then, Lilith and Marie arrive at the room. Lilith starts to shave Peter's beard while Marie cuts off his nails and extracts blood from him. Suddenly, Marie's bracelet turns into a snake, making Peter scared as she puts it in his hand. But it transforms again into a bracelet. Marie and Lilith then act on a scene about an interview between Peter and a female journalist. The journalist has been waiting for a long time and is a big fan of Peter. Eventually, she got the interview and is acknowledged as a big admirer. However, before the interview, Peter sexualized her, which he turned down, and then bit him while he was kissing her. Suddenly, Marie jumps over Peter and tells him it's not okay to sexualize a woman. However, Peter tells him there are always two sides to the story, so he explains his side, claiming that the journalist had been flirting with him the entire time, which makes Marie angry. So Marie starts to chant voodoo and transforms into something, making Peter piss himself out of fear. However, Kara arrives and stops Marie as she thinks it's too early to transform. Lilith then shames Peter for pissing himself and tells him he is lucky because she wouldn't stop Marie from transforming, and reveals she is the one who will marry Marie. Peter murmurs it was all lies, and she doesn't even have kids. Pissed off, she pulls her knife near his genitals, telling him she has a daughter who graduated cum laude. After that, Lilith blocks Peter's vision by putting cucumber in his eyes and leaves. Meanwhile, unknowingly to the witches, Peter is starting to regain mobility in his limbs. Then, Morgan and Elena arrive in the room and remove the cucumber from his eyes. Peter teases Elena to return to the Philippines and be shackled, and Elena replies she is from Puerto Rico and talks about the women there during Spanish colonization. Then, they start to put makeup on him and cut his hair. Shaming him, Elena asks how many Peter slept with his female kitchen staff and continues humiliating him. Morgan then mocks Peter with a crossbow, pointing at his genitals, and states he's annoying when he's frightened. Peter explains that he is frightened because he is being kidnapped and that he has a daughter. Then, Peter suddenly realizes that it's Morgan's first time doing witchy things, so he grabs the opportunity to manipulate and talk to her to stop Morgan from firing the crossbow. However, this makes her angry, and she fires the crossbow at the pillow. Suddenly, Peter grabs Elena and gets the knife she used for cutting his hair. He immediately removes the shackles on his neck and kicks Elena's head. He runs downstairs and heads to the door. However, the door is locked, so he runs to the telephone to dial 911. But the line is busy, so he calls Lonnie instead to ask for help and explains he's being held hostage by witches. Meanwhile, Kara arrives and cuts the line, and they all surround him. He runs to the door in a panic, but Marie is there. Peter tries to cut her using the knife, but Marie grabs and chokes him until he collapses. Lonnie then rushes to Peter's place to investigate. Kara approaches him and informs him that Peter asked them all to dinner and that he was joking when he called. However, Lonnie tells her Peter is not dumb and probably should have the lights turned on if she wants him to believe they're having dinner. Lonnie then grabs his gun and tells her he'll look around. But Agnes, who happens to be Lonnie's mother, arrives and tells him to go home. Lonnie tells Agnes something is wrong. However, Agnes tells him he will go home if he loves his mother, and tells him it is all under control and to just forget about why he went there. Lonnie then obediently leaves. Kara then tells Agnes it is good that she was there. Agnes then reveals that Peter's father abused her, so she tells her to return to the house and finish what she started. When Peter wakes up, he is in a cage, and the witches dress him in Becca's clothes. Then, the girls tell him that they will be hunting him, and Peter begs them not to. However, the girls refuse, so Peter runs for his life. As he runs, he sees creatures surrounding him. Then, he sees the old treehouse while running and decides to hide there. This treehouse is where he assaults Becca, and the walls are plastered with newspaper cuttings from his other assaults. Then, he sees a car arriving, and luckily, Gwen is driving home. He immediately goes in and tells her to drive away. He explains everything to Gwen, telling her that the witches blame him for the death of Becca. Meanwhile, Gwen tells him that she thought they can fix him. At that moment, Peter realizes that it was all Gwen's plan. She planned this for the betterment of her brother because the assaults are still happening now. She also did this because he assaulted her best friend, Becca, in their treehouse. Gwen argues he always gets away with it and that it's not just Becca but plenty of other women. 
Like the journalist and his kitchen staff, Gwen states that Becca died because no one believed her, and Peter called her a liar, and eventually, it ate her alive, causing her to kill herself. Gwen also adds that she even defended Peter, not because he was right, but because he was her brother. Gwen manages to convince Peter with her argument, and he says she's right and apologizes. Suddenly, Kara, wearing the weird creature costume, appears and breaks their window with a spell, making Peter and Gwen panic. Witches surround their car, and both Peter and Gwen are dragged away. Peter is then tied to a table with strange visions, jumbled memories, and dreams involving rituals and knives with the witches. Suddenly, Peter wakes up from a dream, immediately checking his body while heavily breathing. Then, he goes downstairs and sees the table, remembering the ritual the witches did to him. The telephone rings, and as he picks it up, he hears the voice of Kara, so he immediately asks where his sister is. Kara replies Gwen is in her bed with no memories of what happened. She then tells him that the sisterhood is always watching, so if he does something terrible, there will be consequences, so he should do good. Suddenly, the kitchen stove's burners burst into flames as proof of the witch's power. Then, Peter rushes to visit his daughter and apologizes for not giving her the time and attention she needs. He promises that things will be better handled and tells her he is the luckiest man alive for having her. He also apologizes to his ex-wife for failing her and Riley. Meanwhile, all the girls assemble at home, admitting that they are not actual witches and that it is all fake, so they celebrate a job well done. It was all staged with brilliant acts and meticulous drugging with Datura, which was the soup Agnes served him. As Peter leaves, he sees a delivery girl who greets him. Peter asks if they know each other, and she replies they do now. She then shows the sisterhood tattoo on her hands and tells him to be good, making Peter terrified. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.